hopefully uh, you have the appreciation for the context and the intent. Um, at this point, Ted, I'm going to hand off to you to do the show let's tell, after which we begin the round the round table and then we, and the methodology, the actual scientific nature of Okay, I'm just going to uh Start here. So um, just quickly, um, I'm going to add, I, I don't know if I'm going to talk about this, but I'm going to add a quick story why the water balance model express. And it really started, we had the water balance model, Jim's done a good job telling you what, what, where all we're getting with that. But Kim and I were dealing with uh, a local government, I won't mention them, but they were introducing a bylaw. And they, you know, they wanted every homeowner that if they were going to make changes to their property, they had to run the water balance model. Um, to conform to their bylaw and show what they're doing on their property before they could get a permit to make changes to their landscape or decks or driveways or whatever. And we came right going, well, they're never going to be able to run that model. It's impossible for a homeowner to get into that model to run it. And that's where the water balance model express concept was developed. We said, ah, we need something very simple that a homeowner can use that gives them pretty well the answers that we get in the whole convoluted water balance model, the, you know, that tool, but it gives a homeowner something that they can work with. And that's where that concept started. And of course, as you start thinking about it, it's all about the little changes in every property, right? If everybody made a little change in every property, collectively, we'd have a big change. It's not one person doing everything. It's probably better to have a whole bunch of people doing little things. So you can get to um, the water balance model express by going to water bucket. You can see here there's four of them right now running. We have got, um, I think, Coquitlam in the works, and we have also Peterborough, which is a local government in health in the Nova Scotia, Halifax region. Which is, uh, the three of us did a, four of us did a cross-country tour last year. You went all the way across the country talking about the same things we're talking about here today. And that resulted in a group in Halifax coming back and saying, ah, we want to run the water balance model express in our area, so we're developing it for them as well. Actually, Tim, we should clarify, it's Cape Breton, Cape Breton, so the Vita partnership is five local governments and five first nations, so it's kind of a unique uh, collaboration back in the Americans. Okay, I'm going to go back to this thing where we somehow closed down Surrey, and I'm going to run Surrey because that's the only password that we can work with right now. Because you forgot the other Well, everybody <laughs> forgot the password everywhere else. So um, when you go into the Water Balance Model Express, it gives you some information about uh, background information, uh, what it's about. I'm going to have to log in on I have to log in for you. Oh, I'm already on it. I'm already on it. Okay. So I'm going to create a project. In this case, I've, I've uh, see a map of Surrey. You can go around in Surrey and pick a location. I'm going to pick uh, this watershed right here. It will tell you, and this is the work that Jim does. I mean, every watershed, every local government will have their own targets. Jim's going to talk about that afterwards. We're just sort of doing this quick demo and then we'll fill in. But we have a retention volume target, we have an infiltration area target, and we have a base flow release target for Hector. So I'm going to create a project that tells me what my targets in that watershed are. I'll start from square one. I'll call this, uh, this mouse is really sensitive, yeah. so bear with me. Uh, what should I call this one? I'll call it, uh, let's call it 10. <laughs> it is. I have to pick some conditions, whether I'm undisturbed forest grassland, I'm not that. Whether I have all hard surfaces, or pick all hard surfaces, you'll find when you go to the tool, it's very hard to mitigate entire hard surfaces. So I'm going to pick an absorbent landscape with a house wand. Here is what I'll pick, and I have to pick a property length and width, and I'll say my property is about 60 meters, 60 meters. I could have also added it by square meters, but I that. So now, 
we can model that particular site. It tells me my total area is 800 square meters. Well, I have a house on there, so I'll drag my house into my site plan, and I'm going to make my house. Uh, let's put an area this time. Let's say it's uh, 200 square meters. And now you'll see that the gauge on the left-hand side of the screen has um, activated, and it tells me my stream health is it whatever that number means, it's not, I'm not doing well, I'm not in the green, I haven't finished yet, right? So just let me follow along. I have um, a driveway that I'm gonna drag into this thing as well. I have 600 square meters left. So um, let's say my driveway is, uh, let's say it's also 200 square meters. Needle goes down, but it doesn't like hard surfaces, obviously. Okay, so um, I'll put in some landscaping. And I'm gonna say my landscaping is uh, 300 square meters. I've got 100 square meters left in my total area. So now I have um, basically what, now I'm gonna put in some of my green infrastructure. I'm gonna say, oh yeah, I'm gonna put in a rain garden with storage. I'll say my rain garden is uh, and you'll notice that nothing happened and that's because I put the rain garden in but I haven't said what water is going to my rain garden so I'm going to click on the rain garden now and it says um, my rain garden is not connected to anything. It says, I have to select what I'm going to connect it to, either my driveway or my building. I'll connect it to my driveway. And when I do that, you can see the needle on the left-hand side has moved up, where I'm not in the green yet, but it has moved up saying, oh, you're doing things much better on your site. Um, I can make adjustments to the rain garden by sliding these sliders back and forth so you can play with the tool saying how do I optimize the rain garden to get it to the needle to move further. I won't do that. I will go and add a uh, infiltration soil. No, another blue one. Infiltration soil here, infiltration soil is solar, that's what I want to do. And uh, I have about 20 square meters left. I'll, I'll make this 20 to see what happens. My available area is zero. I used up all my area on site. That's good. I'm going to connect my infiltration swale to my building because I can't do it to my driveway. It's already connected to something there. So I'll do that. And uh, in this particular case, I haven't necessarily moved the needle. But if you go in and play with the different areas and different sites, you can get the needle to move further. And this is where you can do some adjustments by playing with um, some of these soil types, percentage lots, soil depth. And I won't go into that here because it'll, there's just a whole bunch of options. You can move these sliders back and forth on drain rock, your design of your infiltration swale. Um, you can change your infiltration area and uh, you'll see the needles start to move back and forth. So a homeowner very quickly can say, ah, this is my site. Sometimes you're gonna find it's hard to get into a, a good <coughs> thing for stream health. But if you do things correctly, on your site, you should get the needle to move up there. And I'm just barely on the edge right now, but if I play with this, I can get the needle to move further. So just by adjusting this, I can also go back in and adjust it. I say, oh, this is not really all that great. I want to adjust that area. You know, I can make that area bigger or smaller. And what's interesting here is that Jim's going to talk about the methodology behind this. And if you make some of the things too big, like huge infiltration swirl, the tool will not show better stream health because maybe you're infiltrating too much water. And so that's where you gotta play with the size and how it's built and all that. And this tool lets you do that relatively simply. So just by going into a scenario, playing with the tools, 
you can optimize your infiltration soil, you can optimize your rain garden, you can change your driveway to the porous paper, porous, porous driveway, the needle will move again. So you can play with your options on your site to see if you can get your needle up into the green area. And that's really what we want homeowners, if anything, what we want homeowners to do is to go into the thing and see what they're doing to make the needle move to the right. They say, oh, porous papers are actually a really good idea. So it's an educational tool, right? Instead of putting in a hardscape, I put in porous papers, put in a rain garden, you can see these are all good things. It's that educational component that's really good for the homeowner. So we've taken all this real complex stuff, made it relatively simple to work with. You can see I have not played with this a lot, and it didn't take me long to figure this out last time and how to do a demo on this thing. So it's quick and it's easy. And I think what I'll do is I'll, anything, anybody want to add? Yeah, oh yeah. Um, what you'll see when you come in is we don't give credit for oversizing things. That's why you get credit up to up to the optimum, and then we're not giving you credit for oversizing. So uh, this would then force people to really think about do they want to build something bigger than they need to? Do they want to spend more money than they need to? Um, that's up to them, but we're not going to give them. We decided that the targets wouldn't give them any credit beyond what they just needed to do. Um, because what we didn't want to have was somebody build a huge trade garden and a huge <laughs> huge something else that, that, that they weren't controlling. So we wanted to have a fine balance. And as we go forward, we can have a discussion about this. Does, does that, does that uh, philosophy actually make sense with, with, with your views? Did, would you like to change that or not? So we're open to interpreting this um, any number of different ways, but this is what we thought. Uh, and then the stream health is really uh, a couple of targets there that are really obvious. One is volume, one is area. And the stream health is just a combination of how well they can do on both. And we'll, and we'll come to that. One of the things I noticed the other day when I was playing with the scenario to be able to do this demo is that when you change the area of something, uh, that, that percent number here will turn red in some cases. You can say, oh, I can get to this big, and then it turns red, which means I'm getting too big. So, so that means you're, 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 you're spreading beyond the bounds of your lot. Because <laughs> we track how many things have surface area on the lot, and if it turns red, that means you just, you well, want to be on the lot side. Yeah. You're trespassing. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you just have to bring something back. So yeah, that, so that, that helps you. And of course, you can also check on the total area here to make sure that that matches. Because obviously, your other team says you can't go over your total area of your lot. That doesn't make sense. So, so yeah, there's some interactive things in there. I think there's, I'm, I'm not going to say that we have it all right exactly. We One of the key things that we did, we started this in North Van, then we went to Cowichan, then to Surrey, now to Comox. And every time we go to a new local government, there's a, obviously a fee to get this all done. But we enhance the tool with new ideas from the local government. And then we enhance all the tools. We go back and add those enhancements to all the local governments. So each local government gains on things that we've been able to do by going to another local government. So that each one will end up running the same in the end. But everybody benefits from new people looking in and getting new features or whatever else we decide to build in. So that kind of a way of doing that, right? You, it's not hard for us to go back and update the other ones with new ideas that we got from a, a new partnership. Because it's a partnership, right? It's so, a partnership, yeah. exactly. They're not software vendors. Yeah. So because that partners come in, that's when you get the aha ideas, because it was Couch who said, geez, it would be nice if we had basically the Google Earth interface. So Surrey, we said, sorry, we said to, to Surrey, will, will you make the, the Google interface happen? Because basically then the, the approach is being, we do ask each of the partners uh, take the lead on some enhancement. But I think the other aspect we'd like to bring out now, guys, with, with our uh, with Richard and with, and with Melanie and, and with David, to share with, with the group, we need your, your perspective how you see it unfolding, because this is all about what the partner's going to do. The, the, the partnership is developing the tools in order to give them back to the partner. So, Richard? Well, why don't we hold off and we'll, we'll summarize at, at the end with the, with the comments that we get. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you want to do your thing right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll be back and sit down and Jim, I'll let you <laughs> pick up your car. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the ruthless timekeeper, but thanks, Jim.
just wanted to give you about the show and tell kind of a sense of how it works. And for those of you who have any kind of a computer background, you can appreciate what's going on behind the scenes to be able to be moving dials and sliders and you know, dials to move and as you move sliders. So I've been involved in the process. Sure.